On today's video, we're going to put away uh, Mr. Jiffy Power Auger for the summer. Mm -hmm. YouTubers, Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. And today I'm going to go over what I do when I put my power auger up for the summer. Okay? And you know, opinions kind of vary on this subject. Depends who you talk to, depends which uh, manufacturers you go to for information. Um, probably the biggest thing that uh, people and manufacturers maybe don't really agree on is whether you should put these uh, power augers up wet or dry. And really all that means is, you know, putting them up wet means you're leaving some amount of fuel in the carburetor and putting them up dry means you run them completely dry, all the gas out of the carburetor, all the gas out of the gas tank, that sort of thing. And, you know, there's, there's a couple uh, trains of thought, I suppose, involved with that. Uh, leaving your carburetor wet, leaving some fuel in the carburetor, I think some people think that's a good idea. So then your non-metal parts won't dry up you know and and maybe kind of disintegrate eventually on you that sort of thing and then maybe the other side of the coin is um, you want to run all the fuel out you don't want any fuel in there because fuel can you know gum up or varnish up and maybe start making things stick so you know I'm not here to tell you which way is really right or wrong the only thing I can tell you is what I do uh, it's worked for me this particular auger this Jiffy model 30 it's over 21 years old it's always ran great for me, so I'm probably not gonna change up what I do, and I thought I might just show you that. Now, having said that, I, I'm not out to uh, argue with anybody who's had success uh, doing things a little different. I'm certainly not uh, out to argue with the engineers that design these things. Now, no matter what you decide as far as leaving fuel in the carburetor or running it completely out, you always wanna use good, clean, ethanol-free fuel. Okay, and, and you want to do that all the time, even in season when you're running the auger all the time, use good, clean, ethanol-free fuel. Uh, but the gas that you're going to use, you know, right at the end of the season before you put the auger up, you also want to make sure that that gas has some kind of a stabilizing element to it. You know, either adding, you know, a gas additive to stabilize the gas, or maybe the gas you put in it uh, has that already added to it, but you definitely want that... Uh, that stabilizing uh, factor in your gas before you put the auger up you know for the summer even if you plan on running all the gas out of it you know I think you can imagine there's probably a uh, little remnants of the gas left in the carburetor so you want that uh, you want that stabilizing property to keep it from gumming up and varnishing up now I like using a premix like this one you know it comes already mixed together with the oil you know you want to match it up uh, to the ratio that your auger calls for but um, this particular one, it's ethanol free. It comes with stabilizers built in. It's a good high octane gas. And, and you know, like I say, it's already mixed up. You don't have to worry about mixing the oil. You just get the ratio correct for the auger that you have. And you know, it's a nice small can. It fits right in your, uh, your ice fishing sled or maybe you can just keep it in the truck during the ice fishing season in case you need a little bit more gas unexpectedly. So I really like to use this pre-mix. Okay guys, this is how I like to put my auger away for the summer. I've got a little bit of gas in here. I'm gonna start it up. I'm gonna let it get nice and warm, run for a couple minutes. And then I'm gonna spray this fogging oil into the carburetor until the engine stalls, okay? And this particular model auger, I don't really have like an air filter over the carburetor, but some will. So you'll have to remove the air filter to, to do this if you uh, decide to do it this way. But I'm going to spray this uh, fogging oil into the carburetor until the engine stalls and then I'm going to pour the gas out of the tank and that's how I like to put it up for the summer. And then there's one more thing I'm going to do with that fogging oil. I'm going to pull the plug and I'm going to squirt a little bit in there too. Okay, after I squirt a little bit uh, down the spark plug hole, I just want to slowly pull the engine over a little bit. Just kind of move that piston in there back and forth just to kind of spread out that fogging oil. And now I feel real good about having that uh, fogging oil in the carburetor, in the cylinder, on the piston, on the piston ring. Okay, so we got the gas poured out. We got a nice film of fogging oil in the carburetor, in the cylinder, on the piston. 
and hopefully that's going to keep uh, any non-metal parts in the carburetor from drying out and hopefully that uh, film of oil is also going to keep uh, corrosion from starting in our carburetor or in our cylinder. Now one thing to keep in mind, next fall or next winter when I break this out to go ice fishing again, when I first start it up it's going to run a little bit rough because of that fogging oil in the carburetor you know and in the cylinder. So uh, just keep that in mind when you first start it up it's going to run a little rough it, it just, it's just going to take 30 seconds or a minute and, and all that fogging oil is going to run through the engine and it'll just be back to normal. And Sometimes I think that's why manufacturers don't necessarily go out of their way to recommend fogging oil. Um, I think maybe they're a little worried that the, the customer is, is going to start it up the next season. It's going to run rough like that and they're going to kind of blame it on the auger instead of actually realizing that it's just the fogging oil and that's normal. Uh, so you know I, I think maybe they're a little hesitant just for that reason alone. They don't want the customers thinking that the auger is running rough. Maybe maybe they don't purchase that uh, type of auger the next time around. Or maybe they tell their friends that and their friends don't buy that particular type of auger. So, you know, that might be one reason uh, that a lot of the manufacturers don't necessarily recommend the fogging oil. You know, another thing, guys, at the start of every ice fishing season, just go ahead and uh, go out and buy a brand new uh, spark plug for your auger. Put it in. Uh, and I think you're going to be happy you did. It's just going to save you some headaches down the road. Just always put a new spark plug in it every season. And you know, another thing I like to do is I like to spray the blades and the bottom of the auger down with some of this non-stick cooking spray. You know, I figure this is the end of the auger that goes into the water. So I just assume use something that's kind of non-toxic. And I just like to kind of spray in and around the blade. Kind of keep it from... Uh, you know, corroding and rusting. And I also like to loosen up the blade and kind of spray in between the nuts and the bolts that fasten it down. And that kind of acts as an antisease too. Keeps the corrosion down and it's non-toxic. And hey guys, don't be afraid to put some of that non-stick cooking spray on your hand augers too before you put them up for the off season. Um, like I say, it uh, helps to keep the corrosion down. Uh, if you loosen up the blades before you spray them down, then tighten them back up. You know, it works as an anti-seize. That way down the road, when you're going to change those blades, they start to get dull. They'll come off nice and easy, and uh, you'll be happy you did it. All right, guys, the only thing left to do is store this auger, okay? And um, we want to store this in a nice, cool, dry place. You know, and just don't lean it somewhere in the garage where it might get knocked over. Make sure it's in a good, secure place, you know, where it's not going to get bumped and banged and, and you know, the kids aren't going to knock it over or anything like that. Uh, if you have to, you know, tie it off to something. Tie it or strap it off so it doesn't fall down. And you want to store it in this upright position. You know, this is the position that it runs in. This is probably the best position to store it in. And, hey, guys, you know, I think if you do all these things, I think you're going to be pretty happy with the performance of your auger. It's, it's really worked for me. Because you know, guys, we want to put this auger up the right way, you know, because when we go out ice fishing, we want to be ice fishing, right? We don't want to be working on augers. Like I said, you know, I, I'm not here to tell uh, manufacturers or engineers their business. I'm not a motor expert, but these are the things that I've been doing. You know, this auger is over 21 years old. You know, I told you guys that, and it's been running good. So I'm going to kind of stick with this. Like I say, it's been working really good for me. So, uh, you know, remember some of these things and, you know, maybe it can work good for you too. And also, hey, remember to hunt, fish, laugh, repeat. This is Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. Hey, thanks for watching and God bless.